do. You're, you're speaking of the uh, advantages of this government, right? In terms of the, and I heard you say we're going to do something else, right? But the speaker will tell you very short story. didn't exist up there or down there or even out here, 
than they existed in here. And the job was not to find the things right under my nose, it was to find the things right behind my nose. So, um, when I was involved in, because uh, we're down to the question of the artist, and what was the third category of artist again? Well, there were people who had money, like Cruz. Yeah, people who had money. money. Right. Yeah. right. And they were starving artists like Van Gogh. Right. You know, and then there were people who were successful. Right. Well, when, when I eventually, you know, I, I, I did science until I was 25 years old, and then I jumped ship from science, and I did my voyage with people, and I went out and did something I knew absolutely nothing about, pop culture. I hadn't listened to its music. I, I just hadn't paid attention to it. And I ended up uh, being credited with founding a new magazine genre, the heavy metal magazine. What? I listened to Bartok and Vivaldi and stuff like that. Rachmaninoff. But yes, I did that. And then I founded the biggest PR firm in the music industry. And I worked with Prince and Bob Marley and Beth Midler and ACDC and Aerosmith and Kiss and Queen and uh, all kinds of people like that. And I never, Richard, ever said, Make the music that will make you popular. I said the opposite. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah, I said make the music you have to make. Because what makes the Western system work is not its material goods. What makes the Western system work is the spirit. We, these are tools of the human spirit. I'm pointing at these things because these are material goods, allegedly, right? But we don't buy these things because they're of the paper pulp. We don't buy these things because of the quantity of ink they contain. We buy these things because something of something ephemeral that happens when we apply the tools of civilization to an interaction between us and this, which represents the spirit of an author. And these are tools of the human spirit. They change us. They upgrade us. They elevate us. They do it in strange ways. Yeah, but Howard, here's the issue, it seems to me. Yes. Certain artists yeah. do that and right. succeed. Right. I can name other artists who do that and obviously don't succeed. Right. Now you are also talking to corporate America. Right. And you're sort of, it's, tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me from the book that you are presenting this message to corporate America. Right. Saying you also have to think and believe what will serve mankind, yes. not just how you will make a bigger profit. That's right. Now what happens if a lot of people in corporate America say, oh, that sounds very nice, Howard, but uh, I want to make more money, and if I can make $20 with this, that's great, I'm making right. money, but if I can make $200 with this, I'm going to go for the $200 thing, even if it is not of this high quality. Right. How does capitalism itself, rather than individuals, how, how are you going to deal with it? Well, again, I was up against this problem during the 20 years of field work in, in corporate America. It was because when you're involved with popular culture, you're involved with corporate America. Corporate America is selling popular. And um, I tried to get across to the people in, in business who do not operate on the basis of just the bottom line. You do not operate on just the basis of numbers. You're dealing with human beings. The first thing I used to say to my artists was, you are not selling pieces of plastic. In those days, we had things called records LPs, and they were in the final. And I said, you are not selling pieces of plastic. You are selling the human soul. And I didn't mean that they're degrading the human soul and dehumanizing the human soul and turning it into numbers, the very opposite. I was telling them, turn your numbers into a sense of your fellow human beings and ride with the tide of things that you feel are powerfully important. Remember, the first rule of science, the truth at any price, including the price of your life. But does that ever pan out in terms of money? Absolutely. The greatest artist in corporate America today is Steve Jobs. Jobs, and he is not a part of a huge corporate machine. He's a part of a very new kind of company. Not as new as it could be. He doesn't let his people work in a tea lounge with a laptop and a cell phone. He still has them in a central office, which is a bit of a problem. He can go much further. But this is a guy who follows his instincts. This is a guy whose instincts seem to go against the grain. I mean, why in the world would you ever take music and put it into something that's this big and this thick? That's a ridiculous idea. Why in the world would you start your own music operation, selling your own music as downloads? I, I thought we were in the business of selling material things. 